Hello there, good evening indeed, and many thanks for joining us on Rwanda Television News tonight. This is what makes our top stories tonight. After a life expectancy report uh, released by the World Health Organization placed Rwanda at the ninth position in having people with the highest life expectancy in Africa, people from different walks of life and experts in economic and social development matters attribute this to good governance. Some of the survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi who obtained house ownership documents for houses built for them by the government of Rwanda say that it has contributed to their development. We are glad to have your company tonight and joining you straight from the heart of Africa, Kigali. My name is Sam. Kalisa. And as we tip it off uh, to our bulletin tonight, after a life expectancy report released by the World Health Organization placed Rwanda at the ninth, at the ninth position in uh, having uh, people with the highest life expectancy in Africa, people from different walks of life and experts in economic and uh, social development matters attribute this to good governance. Innocent Mugabo kicks us off tonight with this report. In Rujanda village, Jishore Sel, in Nyakariro sector of Ramagana district, Mukansanga Dativ is taking care of her cattle that were given to her by the government under the jiring her program. This 65-year-old mother, who also survived the genocide against the Tutsi, says that the cow she received two years ago has added value to her life. I brought it myself, then I started drinking milk. It's now five months pregnant. I sold the bull and my standards of living have improved for sure. By God's grace, I would even live for 100 years because Farsh also provides health care to me. The young and old people in Ramagana district believe that life expectancy is something they relate to for different reasons, they explain. Our future is bright due to the tremendous development and God's protection that we have. If it's not for diseases and other epidemics, I would even live for 100 years. After studying, I will look for a profession to help me develop myself. You never know, I might even reach 100 years if I take good care of myself. It indeed increased because there are things I currently see that weren't there before, like in the health sector, where everyone can easily access health care using a health insurance. Local authorities attest that good governance is the basis of the development that the citizens have achieved, as well as improving their standards of living, as explained by Rutindu Kapier of Jushore Cell in Nyakariro sector. When you get closer to the people, those with problems get solved. Support to those in need of it is also followed up. And monitoring your people's standards of living in general helps in giving them hope. Morani Thobald, an expert in the health and well-being of the people, notes that both individual and the country's economy, development of education, health and well-being of the people are some of the factors that increase life expectancy. The industrial sector keeps developing, paving way to an increase in the standards of living. The health sector has also grown whereby we now have about 49 district main hospitals and more are into plans to be constructed. Now almost every Rwandan has a health insurance. Not forgetting the other great thing, they recently introduced a Joheza, which is said to benefit the old in planning for their retirement. A study released by the World Health Organization, WHO, this August shows that Rwanda ranks ninth in terms of a population with high life expectancy among 54 countries on the African continent. The average life expectancy for Rwandans has reached 69 years from the 67 years counted last year. Innocent Mugabo, RTV News.
We'll go on with matters related to the uh, social welfare. Some of the survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi who obtained house ownership documents for houses built for them by the government say that it has contributed to their development. Meanwhile, those who have not received them yet say that they are having trouble when it comes to seeking and receiving them. However, in uh, the 2011 leaders' retreat, it was decided that 1994 genocide uh, uh, survivors uh, who were given new homes should receive land deeds where those houses were built. Olive Nete takes us through. Munya Neza Silvestre, who is a resident of Kibaya village, Nyarugunga sector in Chichichiro district, says that receiving house ownership documents has greatly supported him in development. This is also emphasized by Karangwa Nadia. They are both genocide survivors who were in need of a shelter. <laughs> My heart was clean after receiving the ownership document. Now I can buy soap for myself. I can also do any other activity. Even these homes that they have built for us, we have been renovating them and we kept developing ourselves. The government has been good to us. Receiving the ownership document made us feel like the houses are our own like where we are residing is our place, and also we feel as other Rwandans. Before, we would feel insecure thinking that they will take back the houses, but now we have access to water, to electricity, we can even build some other houses around for some other activities. But without the ownership documents, we would have not achieved anything. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Unity and Civic Engagement, Clarisse Munezero, notes that in the national budget for the fiscal year 2022-2023, they plan to build homes for 826 families of genocide survivors with a budget of more than 11 billion Rwandan francs. It is an activity that is carried out together with the local authorities because those who the houses are being built for live in districts. This means that the district chooses who will be built for, and after that, we present it to the ministry. And then the ministry sends the planned budget that is set to carry out those activities. Like now, we plan to build 826 homes for the survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, and we will use a budget that is more than 11 billion Rwandan francs. Uh, in the retreat of 2011, it was decided that the people who received new homes will obtain house ownership documents so that they can develop themselves and take their residence as their own and renovate them. However, many who have not yet received these documents have been living in these houses for more than eight years, while the agreements they had with their respective districts required them to live in those houses for at least five years before receiving those ownership documents. Since we have arrived here, we requested the deeds and they would tell us that we will receive them after five years. Currently, we have been living here for more than those years. They requested us to give all the required documents and told us to wait. The district authorities came and surveyed our lands, but till now, we haven't received the documents. We request that you advocate for us so that we can receive the documents and also for us to develop ourselves. The Director General in the Ministry of Local Government, in charge of public development and people's welfare, Usmanik, points out that this process of obtaining documents was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, but she reassures them that they will receive the documents. After the pandemic of COVID-19 has subsided, we are visiting those houses so that we can find out those who do not have the documents and also those who have already received the documents because even though they have already received it, they have obtained them through the support of the government. We do a survey so that tomorrow they won't be numbered as those who don't have a shelter. We again urge them to take good care of those houses, to not mortgage them because when the bank holds it, it follows the agreements they had with the owner and that may again hinder or arise challenges to the government which has supported that person who was in need. We do that so that we can get to know others who are still in need of support. I assure them that the activity of providing deeds will continue. As you know, 
some of the activities were suspended. But now activities have resumed, and I assure them that the activities will resume and run smoothly. Aisha Chenaftal, the coordinator of Ibuka, who advocates for the rights of survivors of the genocide against the Tutsi, notes that more than 30,000 families of genocide survivors have received shelter since 1994. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive. Uh, to other matters now, according to experts in the field of technology, promoting ICT among young people is among the things that will help the country to achieve her goals of becoming a technology hub on the African continent. Jane Motoni filed this report. At the new generation academy, kindergarten and primary school, children between the ages of 5 and 10 are being taught on robotics, coding and sports activities. And after we added the wheels and we added this part that stores the program that we made that makes it run. So we added wires so it could be connected to the USB, this small part, that could be connected to a tablet that could make it run. It will help me to be an engineer because I like coding and robotics. This technology allows them to learn mathematics, electricity and mechanics. These are some of their teachers. These kids were creating some games uh, in Scratch, which is a software we use for kids to learn programming. Uh, it has some of the tools that uh, these kids will need to learn in coding, which is uh, some of them are like looping and conditions. So if these kids are using these games and learning those concepts in, uh, whilst doing uh, these games. Yeah. Some of the parents share their thoughts on this learning journey. I had tangible coding when I started learning. When he started learning about coding, you could tell he is very excited and eager to a point he can't wait to go to school and come back and tell us what they studied. I think it's a very good thing. One of the directors at the New Generation Academy. Jean-Claude Wissenje says that this kind of technology will transform young people into competent workers on the labor market. These students that we are training in 15 to 20 years to come, they will be competing in the labor market. In the past 10 to 15 years, a person that knows Microsoft Word and Excel was considered an exception on the job market. Personally, I don't have a secretary, likewise every other director, because nowadays majority know how to use Microsoft Word and Excel. I considered it as reading and writing, so one can ask themselves if we've reached at this point in just 15 years, then how will the technology world be like in the next 20 years? Various institutions such as Rwanda TVET Board, the Rwanda Basic Education Board and Technology Educators and others say that the fact that primary schools have started to teach coding and robotics in primary schools, it is building a knowledge-based economy. They believe that teaching coding to children between the ages of 5 and 10 is a way of grooming future technology experts in different sectors in Rwanda. When you look at um, the fourth industrial revolution that we are in, it's mainly based on technology. And technology is basically made of two things. We have software or programs that run computer, smartphones, robotics, and other electronic materials. Uh, we have also the part of the hardware of it. So uh, starting from software programs, we need to train our, our kids at early age to start making such softwares uh, so that when they reach a later stage, when they start to choose careers, they go for careers that are um, promising, that are really needed at the labor market. Paul Mukunzi, the director general of Rwanda Tivet Board, noted that teaching this technology to young people will create more technology experts in the country. Currently, the plan is to introduce this technology in various parts of the country. 
There is a plan in place to establish branches in different parts of the country. In September, or during the reopening of schools, in partnership with the Ministry of ICT and Innovation, we plan to establish another coding academy in Mohanga district in order to increase the number of children studying coding and technology. The goal is to create a generation with technology experts capable of enough to compete on the local market and international job market. The Rwanda Coding Academy in Nyabihu District has the specialty of training students in creating softwares. The government is looking forward to expand and increase its capacity. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, Jane, for that report. And as we move ahead, the National Police urges hotel owners and event organizers to work hand in hand to deal with the issue of theft in hotels. This has been addressed by the police spokesperson after the case where a person was recorded by CCTV cameras committing theft in two different hotels and apprehended by the authorities thereafter. Precious Chidesi has more. Those who frequently participate in meetings and conferences in hotels have commended the facilitation and security they are offered. However, participants ought to be cautious of instances where those with the ulterior motive of theft blend into the crowd, which ultimately hinders the nation's track record of good security. We're in a very secure country, and I expect that to extend to hotels. The authorities identified four culprits, including a gentleman disguising as an event planner who's robbed two of the best hotels in Kigali, which he was able to achieve because of a connection he established with an employee of both hotels who undoubtedly aided and abetted the crime. I'm here because of two laptops that were stolen by me from Radisson Blue and Marriott Hotel. A friend alerted me on a gig he had at the convention center, and that was my cue. Hotel owners and event planners have pointed out that they have put measures in place to ensure those who seek their services are secure. While they commend the actions and collaborative efforts with the authorities, emphasis has been made that more efforts should be put into the exchange of information between hotels and event organizers to prevent or contain theft occurrences. Our role as event managers is to facilitate the meeting, however this isn't without its challenges. Our clients have the database of those attending and together we work closely with the authorities to ensure these meetings are secure. The spokesperson of the National Police has emphasized that those intending to rob hotels will be caught and urged hotel management to cooperate with the authorities. It is essential for hotel management to work closely with event organizers. When the theft is being committed, there is always evidence left behind, and that is why every attendee should be accredited. The National Police advises people to install security cameras in their homes and public spaces to aid the authorities to contain theft occurrences. Parsha Chidezi, RTV News. It has been a long day of grief and sadness all over the country and beyond as many people from all over the country expressed their grief over the death of artist Gurabio Ivan, commonly known as Ivan Bohavan, who died due to pancreatic cancer, and Thomas uh, Musi, also known as a younger, who also died due to illness. Nuria Thagasal brings us this story. Ivan Burabio, known as Buravan, was born on April 27, 1995 in Ijikondo. Was the last born in a family of six children to Michael Burabio and Elizabeth Uikunda. 
tonight my desire my reason to live darling he passed away at the age of 27 due to pancreatic cancer in india seven years after he started music he was loved by people from different sides of rwanda due to the message he conveyed in his songs which mainly lead to love Ivan Bravan was a young artist who loved his art and his fellow artists. We lost a precious person because he was holding a big role in the music industry. In 2018, he won the prize called Prix de Couvert, which gave him a lot of opportunities where he went to perform in 13 African countries, and our flag appeared in every country he performed. We loved him, especially Rwandans. Bravan was a good artist who respected everyone and loved everyone. He used to come home and train with my sons after he decided to choose singing while others chose to play a guitar. He got blessed to that and he reached very far. Among the artists, there was no one who could replace him or beat him because of his creativity. Most of his songs, the message was mainly about love, and love is the first thing. What they should learn from him is the care he had and politeness. While he was singing, Bravan made two albums, including Love Lab, which he performed in a concert at Kachigari in 2018. He had recently released his second album, Twaje, and he was preparing to launch it to his fans in a big show. 2018 was a special year for Bravan as he won the Prix de Couvert. It is an award given by the International French Radio. He collaborated with so many Rwandan artists and foreign artists as well. On this Wednesday, also Mus Thomas, who was known as Yanga in movie dubbing, passed away due to the illness he had been suffering for a few days, as it announced by his family members. Many people remember him from the career of translating movies from foreign languages to Kinyarwanda, commonly known as Agasobanui. Through social media, people from different sides of the country expressed their grief over the death of Bravan and Yanga. Through her Twitter page, the Minister of Youth and Culture, Rosemary Mbawazi, said, What a sorrow. Burabio Iva Bravan and Ngusi Thomas Yanga, you are young and we still need you. We thank you for your contribution in building our country and making Rwandans happy. May your souls rest in internal peace and comfort your family. Bravan had already started the website named ivabravan.com and he had a plan to sell his arts and other things via his website, including local handcrafts and clothes made under his name. It was a time when Jose Thomas, known as Yanga, also said that he dedicated himself to serving God for the rest of his life. May their souls rest in peace. Nuriat Agasaro, RTV News. On behalf of the entire news production team and myself, many thanks for being with us on this particular edition of Rwanda Television News. Up until next time, stay safe and have a good evening.